Good evening once again and welcome to Chilling on UBC Television. My name is Draco. Now in society many people are celebrated. First of all, they could be famous or infamous politicians, talented and extremely talented people, and others could be celebrated because of what they are contributing to the society. Now tonight I'm thrilled to tell you that I'm having a special gentleman. He is the president of USPA. That's Uganda Sports Press Association and is both a producer and a presenter at uh, KFM and also Kwese, a famous sports outlet, television somewhere. Uh, with no further ado, allow me to introduce to you Mr. Kanyomozi. Patrick, mm -hmm. how are you doing, sir? I'm okay, boss. And how welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. As I said, I'm so thrilled to have you. Yeah. You have done such a great contribution to society. Thank to you. Waking up every day and, of course, telling stories, yeah. even though some are sports stories. Yeah. You know, one thing I'm disappointed about, a little bit disappointed about you, that yeah. you are an Arsenal fan. <laughs> <laughs> how and do you? I'm a how, very vivid United how, fan. How do you know? Of course, I follow you. Because some Twitter. people don't know which I team I support. You on okay. <laughs> as as a reporter, uh, as a sports reporter, uh, how would you feel uh, getting to maybe uh, to tell these stories? You know, when it comes to sports events mm. and all that. I mean, how has it changed your life as mm. a person? Um, well, to start with, I think it's the best job in the world because. We are paid to talk about something we enjoy because I sit there and watch my sport and then the following morning I'm supposed to talk about what I watched the previous night. So it's a, it's a good job. Uh, but again, how it has impacted, uh, well, of course, a sport is now the biggest. Uh, it's, it's, if you look at the statistics, uh, the most consumed news are either on social media or online, it's sports. Uh, so it means uh, that uh, sports has been making the strides. And of course, for sports to make the strides, it's us, uh, the people that take it out there to the public, that make it make those strides. So it's kind of fulfilling uh, to know that something they are, you're deeply involved in is actually getting there. So um, mm. I don't want to miss any detail with mm. you. Mm. you. You put on a shirt that says straight out of district. Mm. And I've seen on your Twitter, uh. still you use district. Uh. What is it all about? Um, well, for the people who follow me on social media, they know that I'm the kind of person that always looks at the lighter side of almost everything. I always try to, I, I, I don't, I always try to look for the lighter side. So um, th this came up uh, some good years ago, I think like eight or eight years or something. Uh, I, I think I, I pulled, pulled out one of my biggest jokes on social media. Uh, it went viral and it was about districts. Unfortunately, I don't remember <laughs> what it, uh, uh, the exact phrasing of what I put out there, but it went viral over the internet. So all of a sudden, uh, people started calling me district, district, district. So I took it up and now almost everyone, you some people actually, it. some people actually don't, don't call me by name. They call me district yeah. and it's, it's grown. It's a brand that I'm growing. Uh, the t-shirts and uh, so many other things that are on the way yeah so that's how the, game, the name came about congratulations thank you i mean yeah. you won an yeah. election that mm. uh, that that moved strides that mm -hmm. almost had the majority mm. which is how has it mm. been running that office so far i mean for this couple of months uh, well I've, I've been in the office uh, for what four five months now um of course it's tough uh, serving people is tough because uh, I mean and the way I came into office because in the history of USPA uh, the Uganda Sports Press Association this association has been in existence since 1970 but this was the most publicized election yeah. everyone uh, everyone in Uganda got to know about it I mean the day I won the election you would think that maybe it was because all, all the media channels were breaking news uh, but uh, and some people were hearing about you spoke for the first time so it was a very publicized uh, i mean election uh, maybe because of the personality that i am uh, but of course that comes with a burden huge burden of expectations because people expect so much from you so uh, all these months i've been working so Most hard reports, because i don't want to headlines mm, called mm, you mm. a bone leader 
Yeah. Why did, what, that attribute of leadership, yeah. where did it come from? Um, well, I, 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 before becoming president, I was serving in the association. I yeah, I, I first served as assistant general secretary, then I, I served for two terms as the general secretary. Uh, interestingly, I, I hadn't been in a leadership position before that, because throughout my school life, I was never a prefect or anything like that. But, but the, the, the leadership that I've been part of, like when there's something that needs to be done, maybe at the workplace or at home in a family i always take the lead if they say well i think we need to do this so i always come out and say yeah we should do this let me take the lead so i've been that kind of person until i got into serious leadership positions and well who knows where i might go from here yeah mm. of course now if you're not in office mm. we assume you're a parent somewhere mm -hmm. and you have been a great fantastic father mm. have you seen any of um, have you looked carefully to see mm -hmm. if the talent is being passed along Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I'm a, pr a proud father uh, of four um, with my wife, Lucky. And uh, well, I have my our last born. His uh, his three will be making four in May. Um, uh, that guy is everything me. Is um, he interested in sports? Yes, I, I mean Please apart, don't tell me uh, apart, apart from the looks, and un unfortunately, he tells me he likes Liverpool. I I, I don't know where he got that from, but there he tells go, me he likes. I was going to score something. <laughs> he tells me he likes, but but <laughs> that boy sometimes the things he says uh, really amaze me because uh, at home I watch a lot of sport, and this boy, for example, knows which channel has which game at that age. Uh, yes, he knows which channel has. Uh, you, you tell him he's called Amil. Tell him Amil, I want to watch cricket. He will get the remote, not flip through all the channels. He will press straight to that channel. Tell him I want to watch tennis. I want to watch La Liga. Even the football, he knows which 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 is on which channel, and he knows the names. He's a very big fan of Messi. Uh, I don't know why, but he he's, he actually calls himself Messi. Uh, Some time back, he had uh, we had a big a big problem at school. He was crying that the teacher was refusing to call him Messi because uh, I mean he's a big fan of Messi. Uh, interestingly, he also likes Cristiano Ronaldo. And abilities are uh, yeah. Yes, he plays, he, he loves football. He loves football a lot. Um, when you go to a supermarket or anywhere, the first thing he picks is a ball. He has like 20 soccer balls at home. I don't know where that love go, where he got it from because I don't play football at home. Uh, but I, I mean, I think that's something that is inborn because I was exactly like that when I was growing up. I was crazy about sport from a very tender age. Uh, I would play football till it got dark. Uh, I played volleyball a whole lot. So I mean, it's, as a parent, uh, deep down, I'm happy to see that uh, he's exactly me. Most of the things that he does. So now we have a fancy mm. meal assembled here before you. Mm. Some uh, fish fillet, crispy fish fillet. Mm. Fish Looks fish nice. Fish fillet with some steamed rice. Mm. Uh, do you mind taking a bite of this? Okay. You know, uh, uh, of course I wouldn't. Think it's just a pro. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because <laughs> it, it, it looks really tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Some dania sauce. That's okay. dania sauce, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Take a bite. Mm. Are well, you the one who made it? Uh, no, 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 no. I made it with the help of our incredible chef extraordinaire. That's Maren. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now uh, we, as we go on, uh, mm. I would love to inform you that uh, we are going to be having a mouthful interview with this gentleman. Such a beginning, but I, c I can tell you that I've almost picked each and everything that he's saying. Now, on this show, we always want to bring celebrities that can tell you about their childhood stories. By the way, that's the section we are going to tackle next. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. This is Chilling on UBC TV. I'm Drago. If you're still here with me watching Chilling on UBC TV, you deserve an award. Probably you can get a cookie. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with me. Uh, before I introduce to you a man who is the president of Whisper and is doing a great job because a lot of change has been noticed there. But now I want, I'd love to find out about his life growing up, which kind of uh, child was he? Was actually sports one of his interests or he just, how did it come to even fall on his lap? Mm. So, which kind of family do you come from? Uh, well, I come from a, a modest family um, of four one girl and three boys um my my brothers are both teachers actually one is a head teacher and my my sister did accounting i'm the last born from the family you also did a commerce course yes i did i did become a university but it's something you know there are those things that you do for family 
because they expect you to, to be studying something. But me, from senior one, I knew I, wa I was going to be a sports journalist. I wanted, okay, I, I started with the admiration for radio. Uh, before I zeroed in on uh, sports journalism, but by senior four, I had already made up my mind that I wanted to be to be a sports journalist. Now, for the sake of my family, of course, uh, like the career guidance, they wanted me to go that way, because uh, I mean, accounting is something that you can do. You're sure you're short of a job and things like that. But I wanted to follow my passion. So I'm the last one. In that family, um, growing up, well, I, I actually grew up in Masaka, I know some, most people might not know that, and many wonder how Ekanyomos grew up in Masaka. Um, our family initially was in Entebbe, but my dad was transferred to Masaka way before I was born to Masaka Hospital. So I think he fell in love with the place and uh, it, it became our permanent home up to now. That's where my dad How stays. How did you feel growing up from that? Uh, well, uh, unlike, unlike my elder brothers and sisters who had experienced life outside Masaka, me I didn't because I, I was born there. So it, for me it was okay. Of course uh, they draw comparisons between this and the other. but. It's, it's a nice place. I, I actually love it. I, I really love it. And so that's where I, I grew up. I went to school there. Yeah. All my primary and secondary school was there. I went to Masaka Baptist Primary School. I went to Masakesis and I also went to Kasasa uh, for my A-levels. So that, that's so how it was. So if you're saying you're mm. a last born, were you mm. stubborn? Uh, <laughs> Please be honest. I'm trying to be Yeah, to be honest, I was. <laughs> yeah. I was. I, but, but I... I Interestingly, as I grew older, I became more humble. Uh, but, but I was, I was very, very, very stubborn. So I'm, I'm trying to mm. draw a correlation mm. Mm. between you studying mm. from Makerere. Did mm. you study from Makerere? Yes, yes. How did you come to get to town, mm. to Kampala? But, but of course, you know, in, in whichever part of the country you are, the ultimate university is Makerere. So did, uh, so did you study your secondary from Kampala? Uh, no, 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 no. It was also in Masaka. Uh, so I, I, I came to do university and d during university uh, no actually the, the other part that i've not told you before we even get to university in my senior six vacation i got my first job at a radio station in Masaka, uh, because a, a friend of mine told me that there might be an opening at that radio station so what i did i told them i i, I said to myself i want to read news on radio i had never done it so what i did i got a newspaper called my brother and my sister and, and told them, I, I want to read for you, so you tell me how I sound. Yeah. So I read for them, and they tell me, you actually sound good. So yeah. the following day, I went to the radio station. I, I did a voice test that very day. And after, they told me to wait for like an hour. Yeah. After that one hour, they told me, tomorrow come and work. So I, I don't know, I don't know, because uh, by that time, radio was really big. It was not like now when there are so many radio stations that it's no longer it's such a big deal. So now, K so, mm. K Capital FM. Uh, you no, no, no. Um, uh, uh, that was in Masaka. Then I moved to KFM. Uh, that okay. was uh, uh, that was around 2007. I'd actually even finished university. So, uh, so you have worked for KFM since mm. that time. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Um, I'm a very loyal employee. <laughs> you glorified. <laughs> yeah, You're I've been glorified. at KFM for a very long time. I'm actually yeah. thinking of retiring. Yeah. yeah. You know, I had uh, happened to have your your wife on mm. the show before. Yeah. And uh, she, she, she told me something very interesting about mm. journalism mm. and the way how the whole surface of journalism is changing, mm. especially with the uh, rise of social media mm. and, uh, you know, apps and uh, YouTube and mm. everything that mm. now mainstream broadcast mm. is that not much important. Mm. Yeah, Somebody but can even create their own mm. podcast. Mm. You know what a podcast is? Yeah, I do. And podcasts are very, are very common in sport. Um, actually, for more developed countries like the UK, you have they are celebrated uh, journalists who do podcasts. That they are actually bigger than the guys who are on radio. Um, new media, as it is called, is the way to go, because uh, truth is, traditional media is slowly dying. It's slowly being overtaken by new media. So, for every journalist to remain relevant. Uh, for the coming years, uh, the, 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 you need to embrace a new media. If you're still on traditional media channels, uh, utilize that time to get onto new media, social media, uh, all the other channels that are available, because that's the way to go and that's where the money is. So what sort of influences do you have mm -hmm. that 
came to your decision to join journalism? Mm. Um, I, I used to listen to radio a lot. Um, I had a, I had a. Is there somebody in particular? Uh, you know, you, 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 oh, oh my! I, I was crazy about Rasta Rob. I was, very, I was a very young boy, but but I, I, I wouldn't miss any of his shows. I had a very small radio that my brother brought for me from France. I really loved it. It was one of my most prized assets, and I would listen to radio most of the time uh, when, when I was not in school all the time I was listening to radio and I knew I would end up on radio I did everything I could to join radio because it was something that I developed from a very very tender age mm. Mm. which such a person with such a busy schedule you mm. have to mm. be on TV you mm. have to still be on radio mm. on a daily basis yes I mean how have you how do you cope up with such pressure mm. Um, well, it's, it's, it's very hard, uh, let me tell you the truth, it's very hard, because uh, I wake up very early in the morning, I'm supposed to be on radio at 7.40, so that means I have to be there by 7. Now I have to be on radio, uh, and, and I have to do TV in the evening, so uh, that's, uh, the whole day it's, it's basically fixed, because from radio I have to run to TV, which is quite a distance, so by the time I drive from Namuongo to Naguru, it, it's really hectic. So by the time the day is done, uh, then you're wasted. But the good thing is uh, that I'm, I'm, I have some free days in, in between, because uh, Friday is my day off, then Saturday I work for only two hours, uh, then I don't work on Sunday, so I have enough time uh, to, to relax, but also to spend with my family. Okay, Yeah. so now this is more of a serious question, mm. especially to do with your capacity mm. as a president. Mm. What do you think can be done to mm. improve the working mm the working uh, conditions mm. for maybe this post journalists mm. outside here, especially mm. here in Uganda. Because, mm. mm. um, you know, when it comes to rights mm. as journalists, mm. it's a little bit still... Mm. Uh, uh, it's story, some stories are still unwritten yeah. when it comes to Uganda. Mm. What do you think can mm. be done better? Mm. Um, well, it's a, it's a, it's a bit complex what, what needs to be done. Because from, from an individual as a journalist, I want. I obviously want a better, better pay, uh, but again, when you look at it from the side of the media house owners, uh, they, they don't make as much money. Uh, but but um, the, the tricky bit is how do we synchronize that? Because uh, the journalists, uh, they, they don't. We don't work in the best of conditions, and everyone I think knows the journalism is not a, a good paying job. Most of the guys in the profession do it for, for passion. So you have to be extra innovative to be able to live a good life, a good and comfortable life in journalism. So to start with what needs to be done is for media houses, and I'll speak for the sports journalists because those are the people I represent. One, they need to appreciate sport because uh, right now sport is the biggest seller, trust me. Um, they need to appreciate it and remunerate the sports journalists better remunerate them better if there are targets that need to be set to them set those targets but make sure that they work in the best conditions of, of course it goes back uh, the media houses will need to make money uh, so how do you make money and that the onus then is on the money, media house managers uh, to make money but make the working conditions for the journalists more favorable because right now they are not Sorry. So on a personal level mm. social media is more of a bittersweet experience mm. or a bittersweet uh, thing for us mm. or I mean there is some hate mm. there is some love mm. with you mm. how have you cope up with that because I'm sure mm. the pressure that comes mm. from being a president mm. You might have some people disagreeing about yeah, your policies, yeah. or mm. most of them are growing. Mm. How have you cope up with that uh, the negativity? Uh, uh, well, for social media, you have to accept that there has to be negativity because you're dealing with all sorts of people. And uh, me, I, I don't, I don't get bitter when, when say I post something and a person, a person responds uh, with negativity or with hate or anything. Because uh, me, uh, that, that, that's me. Uh, if you give me hate, I don't return the favor. I'll, I'll give you an example of the, my my first encounter with racism. I, I was I was walking on uh, on the streets of Vienna, uh, Austria, and then I found a group of teenagers. They were I think four or five. So when I passed them, they started making monkey chants behind my back. Yeah. So what I, I turned, looked at them and gave them the widest smile I could. 
Uh, so for me, the message was, I mean, hate doesn't have to be countered with hate all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, there were two messages I was communicating. One, I'm proud to be black, but also uh, if you give me hate, I'll give you, I'll give you love instead. And that's how the world should be. So you expect negativity. Uh, but if you respond to negativity with negativity, then you're not hoping matters. So if it's too much, I ignore, and most of the times I do that. Um, or I respond in a cheeky way. You attack me, I, I have my own way of dealing with people who come with negativity. And at the end of it, we all remain happy. Otherwise, you'll get stressed over is social media. That annoys when you try to offend somebody. Yes, uh, and I do that a lot. You, you, you try to offend, of course, I can clearly tell that you're trying to offend me. Then I make fun out of it. Okay, this is the last part. Let's mm. play a game. Uh -huh. this, this game is called If You Only yeah. Knew. Yeah. If You Only Knew. Mm -hmm. Funniest fun encounter. Funniest? Fun encounter. Yeah. What has been your funniest fun encounter? Um, I, I honestly don't remember because I've encountered many along the way. Uh, but I think there's, I don't know if, if she was serious, there's one who wanted uh, me to give an autograph on the book. Uh, I don't know if they were serious, but I, 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 I didn't find it offensive. I found that funny. I mean, how would anyone come up with something like that? Okay. Hmm. Place, you would, uh, place we would find you if you're on your day off. Home. Mm. Best piece of advice you ever got? Um, when you're doing good to someone, don't expect anything in return. Okay. Worst piece of advice you've ever got? Um, uh, worst piece of advice? I honestly don't remember. Me, I can tell you. Uh, 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 worst piece of advice? Somebody like, like, told me uh, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody told me that maturity is uh, a thing. Uh, uh, and I happen to disagree with that because mm -hmm. you know we are all constantly growing even you mm -hmm. at such a tender age mm -hmm. your father children mm -hmm. but still you're also learning in the process you see mm -hmm. how kids deal how to deal with kids and mm -hmm. how to deal with that experience and mm -hmm. all that so maturity is really not a thing mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you are saying do you have any uh, advice that, mm, I, I think the worst advice was uh, was uh, but don't don't uh, there should there's a certain age at which you should get married because yeah. uh, I, I I got married at a, at a much much younger age yeah. and I thought uh, uh, that that's wrong advice yeah. uh, the moment you're into it uh, the age at which you get into it doesn't matter okay hmm. person you would love to switch places with a day a day just uh, for a day um, <laughs> who would that be. <laughs> I, I, have, uh, I have a feeling you, uh, it would it would suit you if you switched place with uh, Miss Lucky Babas. Uh, no, 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 I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I, and all that. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't handle her lifestyle <laughs> even for for five really? hours. No, I, I wouldn't. Uh, there are things uh, that she does that I cannot do. Okay. Uh, but, but but maybe 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 Tiger Woods. Uh, Tiger. Yeah. And congratulations to him. He's yeah, back yeah, in many ways. yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's, it's been an incredible story for him. I can imagine wha what he's feeling uh, when everyone had written him off and then he, he, he shuts everyone up. And uh, um, yeah. Okay. Mm. Superpower you wish you had? Superpower? Um, I, 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 well, there's only one wish that I, I wish I could. I could bring my mom back even if it was for one hour uh, yeah uh, so you wish you could have the powers to to to, to see my mom again even if it was for one hour because uh, when she died there there are things we hadn't talked about and i was planning to tell her about unfortunately she passed on before it so even if i could have her for even if it was five minutes biggest risk you've ever taken oh biggest risk i've ever taken uh, well, uh, your biggest risk I've ever taken. There's, I think, there's. I had a trip. Uh, I, I think, I think I was going to China, uh, like three or four years ago, yeah. and all, all the uh, the all the money I had because I'd paid for the hotel here and I had m my air ticket. I didn't have any other money on me, but I was committed on going and I look back and I'm like what was I thinking because I, I didn't have any other money on me because I knew once I get there I'll be moved to the hotel 
and I didn't have any. That was a big risk because it was what a foreign the country. That, yeah, and I'm thinking, what if something had happened to me? It was some long time ago. Yeah. You're lucky you're mm. in China now. <laughs> yeah. In China now, you can't even move without a pen. You yeah. have to be with a thousand dollars a year. Mm. So, second last, something you could uh, live without? Uh, something I could. Something that you couldn't live without. Sorry. That I couldn't live without my phone. Your phone? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, can you mozi in 10 years? Um, Kanyomozi in 10 years uh, retired from sports journalism and journalism doing my own business, um, my own PR firm and a consultancy firm. Do you speak out politically? Yes, I what do. What do you think about the Bobby One phenomenon? Um, and what's trying to achieve? Well, I've, I've spoken out about Bobby One on so many occasions, uh, but uh, the honest truth is uh, I think everyone should be allowed to pursue their political ambitions. Um, let every, everyone be allowed to compete and I think if they are competing within the laws of the land, let them be allowed to compete. And uh, for him as a young man at 37, those are big dreams to be frustrated and I don't think he has ill intentions for the country. Wow. Mm. What a star, what a celebrity to mm. host mm. such a calm man mm -hmm. <laughs> and he speaks with such intelligence. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being such a great audience. Please, I would love to thank each and everybody that spent time to tune into the program. Now, uh, one last thing that I would want to uh, tell people about you, how mm. could they catch you mm. on radio? Catch mm. him on KFM every single day from yeah. Monday to Friday. Mm. That's from 7. Yeah, I have, uh, I have two updates in the morning, 7.40 and 8.40. And then also catch him on the other television. Kwesi. Kwesi. And you, can, you like, can say that. Yeah, but um, I spend more time on social media. <laughs> uh, so for... for What's the social media handle? Uh, uh, Twitter at Patrick Kanyomos. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, Patrick so Kanyomos District. Yeah. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, each and everybody that has been with me at the field. This has been BMK Cafe. Thank you for the great location and for the incredible meal. I would also love to thank Kwanzi Classic for always finding me these incredible outfits. Until next time, we meet. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>